What is up, everybody? I am back, Marion J08, with my new format for the show. It used to be called Questions for the Goof. Uh, I did it as a subscriber interactions. You guys would send me over time questions uh, via Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus, whatever, and I uh, would accumulate them and do a video where I would answer them for everybody. And this is the same exact. Uh, show but I changed the name now it is called Q&A with Mary NJ08 so I got my iPad here we're gonna get right into it please uh, subscribe get ready there's a lot of new content coming on the way and I also have a new podcast a live podcast coming out Mary NJ08 live uh, where I actually will also answer questions so whatever extra questions that are left over from the show I'll actually answer them on the podcast so even in between uh, the Q&A's please send in questions because uh, now what I'll be able to do is if I have too many questions for this show I could save them for the podcast and uh, when you guys watch that live you'll be able to see your questions answered okay we got a uh, Tim here what reboot would you like to see um, I would probably like to see a reboot of uh, hmm I guess reboot like what they did with Devil May Cry or uh, Tomb Raider. Hmm. A reboot. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, I'm trying to think of a franchise that I would like to see come back. Maybe like on the new systems. Um... Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I would like to s actually what I would like to see is a remake um of the first Resident Evil. I know there's I know there was one and there was one on the GameCube and I'd like to see an actual brand new one redone on like PS4 or something. I think that would be sick. I love Resident Evil and that would give me an excuse to go back to the first one. You know, the whole almost kind of like what they did with Resident Evil 4. But um you know, redo the whole thing, the intro, the graphics, the controls, everything. Just, like, redo it from scratch. Maybe add some stuff, Be you know, add to it, um, make it, you know, different, but still have that classic Resident Evil feel. I would actually like to see that. I would also like to see um, Nintendo bring back uh, F-Zero, maybe on, like, the Wii U. I would love to see that. Kathy B., what sequel would you... What sequel would you like to see? Um, you know, this may surprise everybody, but I actually absolutely love the Max Payne series. And I enjoyed Max Payne 3. I, I, I beat it within, you know, a few days. I just sat there. I, I really enjoyed Max Payne 3. I know people had mixed feelings on it. I would like to see a new Max Payne uh, on the next generation. And, um... You know, I wouldn't mind seeing a, a, a newer Duke Nukem also, like a really, really good uh, Duke Nukem where they take their time and really make it awesome um, on next gen even. It would be sick. I, I would love to see that. Duke Nukem and Max Payne are my two, one of my two favorite uh, characters in video games. So I would definitely like to see sequels to them. Um, and I'm, I'm waiting for the next Elder Scrolls. Not online, I mean an actual new Elder Scrolls. Like a um, sequel to Skyrim. Because Skyrim was is one of my all-time favorite games. So, yeah, I'm definitely waiting for a sequel for that. And uh, another, a new God of War. I would love to see a new God of War. God of War 4. I, I, I absolutely loved 3. And, and I, I liked Ascensions also. I, I didn't think that was there was any problem with that game. But um, I definitely would like to see a God of War 4. A proper God of War. Uh, Tammy Gamer Girl. Nintendo predictions for 2014. Well, I guess we're going to have to wait for E3. There is a Nintendo Direct coming, but it's going to be mostly about Smash Brothers. Uh, I'm hoping that they, um, at this E3, I, I'm hoping that they actually have an actual stage presence this year. And they talk about the new Zelda. Uh, you know... Announcing new franchises, maybe, and now announcing existing ones, sequels to existing ones, um, a ton more games, hopefully, on the virtual console, as I, I love them. 
Um, they're nice, they're cheap, they're fun. They bring back a lot of memories. I like to cover a lot of retro games on this channel, so I would love more virtual console games. Um, there's a lot of things I'd like to see from Nintendo. Hopefully, we'll, we'll be able to see them this year. And she also asks, do you like Wii U? Oh, do you like the Wii U Virtual Console? Do you buy a lot from it? Yeah, I do. I'm always looking on there to see what new games they add. And a lot of them I have from the Wii. So when I upgrade them to the Wii U version, it's only like a dollar or like a dollar fifty or something. So yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for new Virtual Console games. It's nice to have them digitally all on your system. I got Punch Out, I got Link to the Past. Um, I'm going to try to get all the Mega Mans. I got a lot of the older Street Fighters. Um, you know, Earthbound. They're all good. Total Triscuit. <laughs> Have you played any good iOS or Android games lately? Recommendations. There's a lot of really good ones. Um, The Room 2 is out. That's a really good game. If you ever played the first one, that's a really amazing game. Um, on mobile. Um, Rayman Fiesta Run. It's a really good game. It's a follow-up to Jungle Run. That's a really good game. I love Endless Runners. That's a really good one. Um, <clears throat> if you want to actually check out a really cool old-school game, like in the style of like Kirby from like the Game Boy, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's on iOS, but I know it's on Android. It's called Jack and Jill. I actually am going to cover it on here on my next Android app review. You definitely want to check that out. That's a good one. Um, what else have I been playing? Yeah, that's pretty much it. There's, you know, there's, um, well, actually, you know what? I got my iPad right here so I can look, see my most recent ones, because I forget, because, you know, I download a lot. I also have a ton on my Android phone, too. Um, Tiny Thief, I've been playing a lot of that. Uh... Quiz Up, which is a fun a trivia game. I actually c covered it here on the channel. Quiz Up is a cool game. There's one called Impossible Road, which is a really, really fun game. Um, what else do I have on here? Yeah. I've been I've been doing a lot of Plants vs. Zombies, too. I still go back to that from time to time. Um... Yeah, there's a couple good ones. The the Call of Duty game that came out for iOS. Um, what was it called? It's on here somewhere. Strike Team. Yeah, there's a couple good ones. Yep, always good to get mobile games. I like mobile games a lot, uh, especially on the tablets. Um, Crammy Conklin, how many games? Digital and physical, do you buy a year? That's really hard to say. You know, I buy a lot, a lot, uh, more than the average person because of this channel and even before this channel. Um, it seems like more and more every year as more systems come out. Now with the next gen, I've been trying to build my library up of them. Uh, every time something comes out, I've been getting it. Um, especially now with, like, the PS4 um the, dig the indie games are phenomenal. I mean, the indie games are fantastic. They're cheap. They're fun. They're well worth the money. You can get tons of them. There's, there's sales. So digitally, I've been buying a lot. More than ever. Plus with Steam on the computer. Um, and physical, I've been buying a lot. So it depends on the year, and it depends on how good the year is as far as releases. Um, I like my AAAs, but I also like my indies. So I, I do try to um, change them up a bit. But... um. This year, so far already, we're in April. I've been getting a lot. And it has a lot to do with the new systems, too, because, you know, I'm interested to see what these systems can do, like Infamous Second Son. Um, and, and we're still getting really, really great titles on last gen, like Dark Souls 2, South Park, The Stick of Truth. So um, I can't really give you a number. It's up there, though. It's in the hundreds, though, uh, especially with digital, way past that. Hundreds alone just in digital. Kate Burns, how many pets do you have and what kind? I have two. I have a Jack Russell Terrier named Mario, and I have a ball python named Chino, named after the Deftones. 
Robbie 260 what did you think of Metallica's Through the Never? I thought it was amazing. I thought it was phenomenal. Um, I did not get to see it in IMAX theater. Uh, but <clears throat> I did enjoy it on Blu-ray. And uh, I bought the special edition Blu-ray with all the bonus features and everything. And I thought that it was phenomenal. Great. If you, didn't, if you haven't seen it or bought it yet, get it. Especially if you're a Metallica fan. It will blow your mind. I mean, the story is not the greatest, but, you know, the concert footage and the effects, it's just a visual masterpiece, really. Incredible set list, too, for a Metallica fan. Mark Lasgini, latest indie games played. Uh, Don't Starve, um, Mercenary Kings, Outlast, um, wow, tons, tons on Steam. Uh, Max the Curse of Brotherhood on the Xbox One. Um, what other indie games have I been playing? Contrast. Resogun. Yeah, good gear for indie games, especially with the PS4. Hopefully also the Xbox One will catch up. And of course I have Steam on the computer, so I'm always playing indie games. And there's a lot coming. Daylight is coming. Um, Velocity X2 is coming. A um, lot of good ones. Rhyme, The Witness. There's a new Odd World coming. Yep. So there's a lot. There's a lot of good stuff on the way. Uh, Crystal Clear Kodak. What do you think about Twitch and streaming on PS4? Uh, I love it. If you guys haven't been following me on Twitter, and I hope you are, at Sean Mary and Jay, I've been streaming a lot. Uh, also on the Xbox One, too. Um, I've been doing the Xbox One streaming, and I've been doing uh, PS4 streaming, and I enjoy it. I really love it. Um, I do a thing on my channel now called Late Night Streams, where I actually, sometimes I do it with the subscribers, sometimes I do it solo, and I've been streaming a lot. I've been doing a lot of uh, Titanfall lately. I've been doing a lot of Garden Warfare. Killer Instinct on the PS4. I'm going to start streaming uh, Thief pretty soon. Um, I was doing Strider the other day. Um, I was doing Outlast not too long ago. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a cool feature, and I really like it, and it's it's pretty neat. It's fun. Oh, uh, a lot of Ghosts, uh, Call of Duty Ghosts I've been streaming. Lots of games for you. Your opinion on episodic games. Awesome. You know, between The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us, they're the two, one of my two favorite games in a long time. And it's, in a way, it stinks because you're waiting for the next episode to release. And, you know, Telltale Games isn't the kind of company where, you know, they, they really give release dates. It's like, it comes out of nowhere and boom, it's on PSN or it's on Steam, or it's on Xbox Live. You know, you really got to really stay up up to it and, and wait for the game to come out, and they leave you hanging, and sometimes it's months and months, and sometimes it's only a month, and there's really no release date set or time frame. <clears throat> so waiting for the game to come out is, is always the hardest, but it's so worth it when they do. I mean, each it seems to me like each one is like a finale. Each one is like a grand finale. Each episode, they just get better and better and better. Look at the last of The Walking Dead, um, episode two of season two. Look at um, The Wolf Among Us, Smoke and Mirrors, and now a Crooked Mile f a trailer just got released. So yeah, I love episodic games. They're cheap. You can get a lot of gameplay out of them, um, and I enjoy them a lot. Yeah, episodic games are great. I wish there was more of them. There is more coming. Telltale is actually doing one for Borderlands. Joe S. Future of Call of Duty, and I'm guessing he's saying this because of Titanfall. I don't think anything is going to change. Call of Duty ha has their clans, has their you know fanatics, their groups. That That's not going to change. I mean, I'm sure a lot of them are playing Titanfall also. I don't know if they're going to switch completely to Titanfall and then just forget about Call of Duty. I, I mean, you know. I don't see a difference since Titanfall's been released. If anything, with the more competition, the more stronger first-person shooters get, in my opinion. 
but I, I do hope that the new Call of Duty that's coming out this year, because you know there's going to be one. I, I know people have been rumoring it might be Modern Warfare 4. I hope it's something drastically different. I hope they're going to do something. Especially now with Titanfall, probably will give them more competition to step it up. So in my opinion, it'll actually probably make Call of Duty and other first-person shooters like Battlefield even better. Cindy, Steam Machines, your opinions. Well, why not, you know? I mean, if you have a high-end PC, you know, a really, really high-end gaming PC with, an, you know, amazing specs, probably, you know, not going to really matter to you much. But if you don't or you're looking to and you're waiting out to see what these Steam Machines offer, sure, why not? Hey, whatever's good for gaming, you know, and um, Steam, I have hundreds and hundreds of games on Steam. There's great sales um, to have something all ready to go with the controller looks really cool. Uh, yeah, why not, you know? I mean, it's just like a, to me, it's just going to be like high-end PCs already all put together. Michael Lancaster, what's your favorite retro system? This actually was a comment, and it's a good question because it's a hard question because I love a lot of gaming systems, and I have such great memories of them. But, you know, some that stand out to me are the GameCube because I absolutely loved collecting for the GameCube. The Super NES, to me, is just... An amazing part of gaming history. There were so many phenomenal games on the SNES. Um, I loved collecting for the Dreamcast. Of course, even the Atari was a phenomenal system, the 2600. Yeah, great stuff. That is going to wrap it up for this week's, or this month's, um, Q&A with Mary and Away. I am glad I enjoyed all these questions. I'm glad I answered them. Like I said, keep keep sending them in because whatever I don't use for this series, I'm going to be using on my live podcast. So keep an eye out for your questions to be answered. Take care, everybody, and I will see you on the next episode of Q&A with Murray NJ08, formerly Questions for the Goof. Take care, everybody.